Good evening to our listeners, viewers, and readers. I am Melina Calmon, and together with Eugenia Cunha, we would like to introduce you to the new forensic sciences research special issue on the reality of the dead in Brazil, perspectives on identification in forensic anthropology. Hello, everyone. As guest editors, alongside Bridget Algier Wivet, we propose a topic to be delved into what is the current state of forensic anthropology in Brazil and where do we stand when identification is concerned? Coming to terms with the reality of identifying the dead in Brazil is the challenge we propose to several Brazilian forensic anthropology experts and in the current focus of this special issue. We ask the, contribution, the contributors to drill down to the fundamental questions in order to define the baseline upon which we can build our understanding and establish the future pathways for the field. The advancements of the field in Brazil are exemplified by the articles you will find in this special issue. The idea for this special issue was born on Eugenia's broad knowledge of the field and her experiences in forensic sciences in Brazil. After more than 20 years of one-site work, she felt the need to share what was being done in the country. And because of that, several Brazilian experts were invited to participate and to present a paradigmatic case related to the reality of forensic anthropology in Brazil, which major issues and difficulties will spark discussion. Two main achievements resulted from this launch challenge. First, a symposium, unfortunately held online due to COVID restrictions in 2020, with a large number of participants and where the presentations achieved a good quality, illustrating the context and cases of six different Brazilian states sponsored by Stanford University. The success of this symposium led to the idea of this publication because there was an obvious need to disseminate what was being done in Brazil regarding forensic anthropology and create a discussion around these particularities. Uh, moreover, the second challenge was accepted by the large majority of the symposium presenters. Forensic science research was the optimal recipient with a strong peer review system. This special issue compiles papers from experts from five different states of Brazil. Minas Gerais, Rio de Janeiro, Distrito Federal, Santa Catarina e Paraíba. Shedding light to the forensic anthropology perspective of practice in an identification of the deceased in the country. The experts were invited and, and asked to tell us how their institutions adapted to the new challenges of this century and what they are doing in terms of groundbreaking research. The remarkable work done by the team of Belo Horizonte with the mass disaster due to the collapse of a mine tailing dam in Brumadinho stands out for their main achievements. The fact that most of the victims, more than 200, were identified in one year show the quality of their forensic work. From the southern state of Brazil, Santa Catarina, comes a very good article by Paulo Miamuto and collaborators. It discusses personal identification and missing person initiatives in the states from 2019 to 2021, highlighting the recent advances and current challenges, namely the creation in 2020 of forensic anthropology sector. Subscribing these host authors, there is a Brazilian paradox, a country which urged forensic work as a legislation that severely restricts the professionals performing post-mortem examination. So far, forensic anthropologists are not previewed in the current federal or state legislation. From Brasilia, Nicole Prata Damasceno and colleagues provide recommendations of procedures related to the chain of custody in forensic anthropology, detailing aspects relevant to keep the chain of custody in all the steps of the investigation and examinations, considering the new law that was passed in 2019. They also highlight the importance of preser preserving evidence integrity from its recognition and collection at the scene until its disposal. Aluísio Trindade brings up 
two examples of cases where identity was not achieved, discussing the reasons for including it. The inexistence of a centralized missing person database should be stressed here since it is a major shortcoming in the forensic reality in Brazil. And on the note of databases, Melina Calmon divides forensic data management and database systems in forensic investigation for cases of missing and unidentified persons in Brazil. This article seeks to approach some of the most critical components of an effective forensic data management system. Mainly, it aims to bring attention to the urgent need for an effective and integrated approach in Brazil. Yara Lemos and colleagues from Belo Horizonte report a microwave oven case. It is an illegal burning of a body using a tire stack where the victim is placed inside. They set the structure on fire using flammable substances. Despite the destruction of the body, identification was achieved through the morphology of cella turcica, an aspect of the axis, once confronted with anti-mortem records. Another case study is from the team of Marcos Paulo Machado from Rio de Janeiro, where the fire is a very popular way of trying to vanish with the remains and evidence and hinder the identification of a body. With the help of a statistical analysis based on individual, individualizing characters of a carbonized body, the team was also able to establish a positive identification. From Paraíba, we have a case report by Evelyn Surian Pessoa and her team. It deals with a case of dismemberment in northeast Brazil, showing how forensic anthropology can shed light on cases involving the identification of dismembered instances, despite the lack of equipment or involvement of this discipline in all the needed steps of the research. Finally, another contribution from Belo Horizonte assesses the epidemiological and toxicological profile of officially confirmed suicide victims in a year uh, in one year period. We are delighted about the final format of this issue since it reflects the particularities of forensic anthropology in Brazil, a reality quite different from the one of other countries in Latin America. Yet, the continental dimension of the country, the severity of violence, and the shocking numbers of missing persons are fighting a more solid answer from the discipline under question. There are now more forensic research centers, mainly located at universities, CML, CAAF, CAAF, among others. Identified osteological collections are now systematized and organized, and capacitation education on the field at the level of post-graduation is now happening and being taught. The Brazilian Association of Forensic Anthropology, ABRAF, which has commemorated 10 years, was also a big step forward in developing the discipline and definitely Brazil is now on the world map of forensic anthropology and its practice. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to work on this project with you, Eugenia. It is a pleasure and an honor to be able to share the advancements of our field in Brazil. We, we also would like to thank forensic science research, in particular Professor Lee, for providing the space for this discussion and publication, and all the authors who contributed to make this a reality. We hope you enjoy this special issue. Thank you.